A quartet of federal by-elections yesterday, two in Manitoba, one in Ontario, and one in Quebec. The incumbent party in each riding held their own, so the balance of power in the House of Commons is preserved. But for political insiders, there's always something to chew on over these latest results. And for that, we turn to our chief political correspondent, David Aiken in Ottawa. Good morning to you, David. Uh, let's start with just your big picture takeaway from these races. Well, I think let's run through the parties. First of all, the Liberals. We know we've seen polls where Liberal leader Justin Trudeau, his popularity and approvals have been sagging. Did it show up in the numbers? No, it did not. In three of the four by-elections last night, Liberal support improved, in some cases quite dramatically. So the Liberals today already saying good night for, for their team. If we talk about the Conservatives, the Conservatives held the two ridings that they started the night with. Uh, they're gonna, they have a big uh, good result in, in a riding in southern Manitoba, but the, the Conservatives did not not expand their support. Even though they've been leading in the polls nationally, their support really didn't grow except in one riding. Uh, as for the New Democrats, terrible night. Here's why. They weren't expected to win in any of these ridings, but you would think they would hold their vote share from 2021. They did not. They were significantly fallen back on their vote share for 2021. And where did those votes seem to go? They seemed to go to the Liberals. So we know we've heard a lot of talk about this Liberal NDP power sharing agreement, whatever. What, what it looks like happened is a lot of voters said, given the, the choice, they voted for the real thing. They voted for the liberals. That's a problem for Jugmeet Singh and the NDP going forward. They have to stop that bleeding. And it's even a problem for the conservatives because in some races, not last night, but in other parts of the country, conservatives count on a liberal NDP split, a strong NDP, in order to come up the middle. So I think those are the things in the big picture that all the parties will be looking at today. All right, let's dig into the results a little bit more. Uh, starting in southern Manitoba, where the People's Party of Canada uh, leader decided to run. Yeah, this is the one that got all the attention. Southern Manitoba, the MP had been conservative Candace Bergen, a deputy leader. She retired. Quick note, in 2021, Bergen won, but the PPC here in Portage Lisgar finished second. It was their best result in the country. They got 21% of the vote. But let's look at last night's results. Last night, the Conservatives won handily. Brendan Leslie is the new MP. He's a former staffer for Bergen. He got 65% of the vote. That was a 12-point improvement on what happened in 2021. And Max Bernier, presenting himself as Max, this is a riding with a, a big German-speaking uh, population, so Max Bernier on the ballot. Uh, Bernier just got 17% of the vote. That's four points worse than the no-name candidate that ran in 2021. Conservatives very happy about that result. I bet they would have liked to, to push the PPC numbers even further down. If we go up to Winnipeg South Centre, this is a, a kind of urban-suburban riding that Conservatives will have to win this kind of riding if they hope to form government. But here, uh, they fell back versus 2021. The winner is Ben Carr, strong showing, 55%. Ben Carr is the son of the late Jim Carr. He was the MP uh, who died of cancer in November. His Jim Carr's son taking over Ben. Ben did 10 points better than uh, his dad did in 2021. So that is the story of Manitoba, a hold for the Liberals and a hold for the Conservatives. All right, and now looking uh, to the ridings in Eastern Canada, David, the Liberals, including the Prime Minister, very interested in the race in Montreal. He was. This is the riding of Notre Dame de Grace Westmount, NDG Westmount. The winner is Anna Ganey, former president of the Liberal Party and a close friend of the Prime Minister. So close, it was Anna Ganey and her husband who went with the Prime Minister to that trip to the Barbados, the Aga Khan's Island, or the Bahamas, pardon me. Um, anyways, Anna Ganey is coming into, into Parliament. I would suggest that you look for her as a potential cabinet minister, if and when there's a shuffle. She won with 51% of the vote, just a bit off uh, the result that Mark Garneau, the former astronaut, uh, and the former MP for this riding. So no surprise there, Anna Ganey winning in that Montreal riding. If we talk now about the riding in Oxford, Ontario, this is a southwestern Ontario riding, farm country in southwestern Ontario, been conservative for 70 years, and sure enough, the conservative Arp and Canna won with 43% of the vote. But the Liberals saw their vote share improve by nearly 16%, why? Because the outgoing Conservative MP, Dave McKenzie, was upset about the nomination process. McKenzie wanted his daughter to take over. His daughter lost the nomination, and McKenzie endorsed the Liberal candidate. And so again, the Conservatives won, but the Liberals had a great day here in finishing second. What's the message for Conservatives? Need they be reminded again? When Conservatives fight among each other, Liberals tend to benefit, and that is the takeaway that Conservatives will want to reflect on in the riding of Oxford. They were not united, and though they won, the Liberals had a very good day. Those are sort of your four little mini snapshots of where politics are at. <laughs>
There you go. Certainly a lot to chew on there. Uh, we appreciate it, David. Thanks for this. Thanks.